listening to South Pod, Rise of a Region, hosted by Stanfield Gray and John Yarian. So this is an amazing time, I think, to launch a startup in the Southeast, you know, and, and in the, across the South, really. When we launched um, Dick South six years ago, our mantra was succeed in the South. The idea right. that you could grow and scale a company in the region, not have to move to Silicon Harbor or Boston or New York or some other tech center. And I've been following Chattanooga and Nashville and other parts of Tennessee as, as your startup ecosystem has evolved too. Could you tell us a little bit about um, Colabs, where you're the CEO, and, and give us the lay of the land, sort of what it feels like to be an entrepreneur in Chattanooga. Yeah, I agree, Stan. Um, it is an outstanding time for entrepreneurship, for startups and ecosystems in the Southeast. I think much like Charleston, um, I think you guys have a great outfit stuff going on in Greenville. Chattanooga is one of those type of cities here in Tennessee. And so at Colab, we call ourselves the front door to entrepreneurship here in Chattanooga and the 10 county surrounding region. Um, over the past eight years, we've served over a thousand entrepreneurs that have yielded over 220 companies and almost all of those are still in play today. So we believe wow. we found a secret sauce to entrepreneurship here in the Southeast. Um, truly, Chattanooga is unique. There's a really a long entrepreneurial history um, to the city. When you think about things like Brock Confectionery, um, Moon Pie and Little Debbie, uh, Snack Cakes, Coca-Cola, uh, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company, which was one of the largest bottling companies for Coca-Cola um, in the world at the time, uh, helped drive a lot of wealth in this city, and that helped spawn, spawn generations of um, people that were looking to get into the new stage of entrepreneurship. And so, by and large, that's been happening over the past 10 years here in Chattanooga, uh, one of the big things that helped drive that was our gigabit in internet infrastructure. It is actually some of the fastest internet speeds in the country with 10 gig speeds available. And that's how you know we got our name is the gig city. Right. And that helped bring a lot of talent to the city um, that was supporting entrepreneurship. So you would say that's the biggest ingredient in that recipe of your secret sauce? Yeah, I think that's, it, it, that's the one we like to tell people about. Okay. Um, I think though, <laughs> You know, as you live in another southern city, there's also something about the people here right. that makes it work. Um, and Chattanooga is a great city. It's an incredible lifestyle that people can have here. We've got the mountains and the rivers. And that brings a certain type of personality of people that want to create things, that want to build things. Um, and whether that's something, you know, in the arts or something in the technology field, that maker mentality is something that we believe is critical to building this ecosystem. So what has the relationship been like between some of those legacy brands you mentioned and some of the newer startups? Is there a good support system or is there entrepreneurship happening as well? So, yeah, there's I think there are two facets, um, kind of two ways that that has evolved. Uh, number one, like I said, there's been an incredible um, give back from people, you know, heirs and so forth from from high net worth families that built companies of yesterday. Um, through philanthropic and foundation giving have allowed organizations like Colab, we are a nonprofit organization, has allowed us to develop and support um, an ecosystem of nonprofit and for-profit entrepreneurs um, through economic development for the region, as well as building a sense of entrepreneurship, and that's a big part of our strategic plan now, building entrepreneurship in some of the legacy companies that exist in the region. Um, we believe that at Colab, and a lot of our other partner organizations, we're helping drive a lot of that fun and creativity and, and entrepreneurial mindset that you see from our companies is starting to um, find grassroots opportunities and legacy companies as well. Well, for our um, viewers and listeners who have not been to Chattanooga, you know, describe your innovation district. I remember about 10 years ago, I was in Chattanooga and there was this beautiful bridge that crossed over the river. Is that, yep. is that kind of what we're looking at? Is that bridge over into the newer innovation part? So, Stan, I mean, that's, you're, you're, you're timely as usual. Um, we actually, yesterday, announced our formal update to our innovation district. And 
We're located right at Edney and uh, in the Edney Innovation Center at the corner of 11th and Market in downtown Chattanooga. We are located literally at the heart of the Innovation District. But the Innovation District is about a mile radius each way um, around this building. It encompasses the University of Tennessee Chattanooga. It encompasses City Hall, the library, TVA, and a lot of the other partners that we have. So there's a great mix in the Innovation District of you know first generation local businesses um high growth startup companies and legacy companies as well as academia and civic institutions and cultural institutions that help drive that so you know i was at south by southwest uh a week or so ago and a lot of the feeling um that's been germinating there over the past decade or so we're feeling that in our own way here in chattanooga and it's special we're feeling a similar buzz here in Charleston, and we've noticed that quality of life is very important to the recruiting efforts of our tech companies. Is, is that what you're seeing in your innovation district as well? Yeah, um, I will say one of the interesting things about Chattanooga, um, for people that are into outdoor recreation, this is some of the top rock climbing in the country. So for people that are trail uh, walkers and runners and mountain biking and you know enjoy all of the mountains and the river type of activities, that enjoy doing that stuff in their spare time, but you know have strong technical skills or entrepreneurial skills and have kind of um, those type of ambitions, it becomes a natural place for them to land. Um, I've never met so many people that are building companies that came here because when they stop you know, working on their, their ventures or if they're working at a company, they can get some of the best rock climbing in the country. I love it. Well, look, using that climbing, um description as a metaphor let's talk about some of the programs at collabs that help entrepreneurs climb and scale i know you have co-starters and accelerator and gig tank can you break that down for us yeah so one of the things that i think is really special about chattanooga um and and it's epitomized by collab is that we treat entrepreneurship as an opportunity for everybody whether you're a high growth company or you're starting up you know a mom and pop coffee shop that's going to be located at the corner of the, 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 the avenue. We think that the same principles go into the business. And, you know, the way I've always thought about this, my background was in investing and advising, and I was an engineer a lifetime ago, is that whether you're building a lemonade stand or you're building a billion dollar company, it's about building, managing, and selling. And so build, manage, sell is what we teach all of our, our companies. And so through the co-starter program, this is a nine week program geared towards first time uh, ventures that are small in scale, right? Things that are not gonna be for a large addressable market, um, but you know, the coffee store, the bakery, um, you know, the, we have a juice store that's been incredible. Um, you know, small mom and pop type stores that we call our local growth businesses or small and medium sized enterprises, right? And this is a program that works off of a business canvas and was developed by the co-starter program here inside of CoLab, um, and we continue to work with them to help educate people that have never really done an entrepreneurial endeavor before to think about how do they get that from ideation, um, you know, to something that they can develop and something that they can build. And it, all, many times these companies don't require any venture capital, but we have great relationships with other financing institutions and sources of capital, and we help educate people about what their financing opportunities are. And so in the co-starter program, it's really for first time business owners. They're not growing scale businesses. What we see oftentimes is that after several years of running a business like that, people may decide that they want to scale up, that they want to launch out a product out of their business that can go to the large market. And so the accelerator program is a great opportunity for that. Our accelerator program is an 11 week program that's focused on increasing customers' capital and capacity to help companies grow and scale. And uh, it's really geared towards helping people move to a position where they're ready um, for sizable seed rounds. Okay. And so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, please proceed. That, you know, the, 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 the most famous of our accelerator programs is called our Gig Tank Accelerator. Okay. And that's focused on um, applications, products, and services that are using high bandwidth, low latency networks like the 10 gig network we have here in Chattanooga. 
Very good. So are those companies, by the time they're at that stage, are many of them venture backed? Are they approaching growth stage? Are they what what round of financing or capital would you say they're in? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. I would say most often um, these companies have done you know an early angel or friends and family round mm-hmm. and are looking to move into more of a bona fide seed round. Um, we have some companies that have done a small seed round and are looking for you know you could call it a seed plus or or a, a series A round. Okay, very good. I know you are you have an exciting event coming up around Gig Tank. Is that correct? That's right. That's what's right. what's so, happening there? I mean, what, tell us about what the energy is going to be like, who's participating, what can, what can people expect? Yeah, so Gig Tank is, you know, an incredible opportunity. Um, we've been running this program now for seven years, and it's an incredible opportunity for us to bring companies from all over the country to actually come to Chattanooga and utilize that network and meet people in this environment. We have great mentors, great technical experts um, that can help people develop their product, uh, pass an MVP stage, and prepare them, their company, um, for the type of funding that we that we were just discussing. I think the energy around this is incredible. It's uh, we've had some great companies come out of this uh, accelerator program and really go on to do great things. Some of these pro- companies will come out and will go into TechStars. So we had Collider and Rapid RMS. Two of the 10 companies in Techstars Atlanta last year were out of Chattanooga. So two out of the 10 companies Very good. were yeah. Chattanooga companies. I was at the Techstars pitch in Atlanta last year. That's who, right. Yeah, who, who was it? Do you uh, so Rapid RMS and Collider. Okay, and Collider. Fantastic. Yeah, so Graham Bredemeyer from, from Collider and uh, Jason Luna from Rapid RMS. So do you think of the Gig Tank as kind of a feeder into some of those Y Combinator, Techstars, some of the bigger programs? Yeah, we've been, uh, you know, certainly a feeder into those higher profile programs. Um, you know, as part of what we do at Gig Tank, we are not forcing people into a valuation event, kind of as part of our accelerator program. We are strictly here to provide support around, you know, preparing yourself for capital, building customers through pilot opportunities, and building capacity through access to our network and resources that we have here in Chattanooga. Um, we certainly partner with other organizations and other accelerator and incubator programs so that we can build a pathway for our, our companies to come through our program. Um, and that's not only Y Combinator and Techstars, but even things like SBIR. Um, the SBIR Roadshow is actually coming through Chattanooga on April 16th. And so that will be another opportunity for some of our companies that are focused on you know specific science and technology um, ventures to find another opportunity for funding. Um, we've had success with that down here. Branch Technologies, uh, run by Platt Boyd, is an exciting, large-scale, large-form factor 3D printing company that has uh, received SBIR funding, as well as funding from NASA for building houses on Mars, believe it or not. Incredible. Well, I don't plan to live in one of those, but I wish them <laughs> the best. <laughs> it's in Charleston. Um, Good people, good food, good like good coastlines, and you can you can build a company and go sit on the beach on the same day. For me, as an investor that's just traveling around, it's sort of the easiest way to meet the largest group of entrepreneurs from from the region. This is one of the only conferences in my life that I've ever been to more than once. I think you have the potential to do something very meaningful with what you're doing here. And I believe that there is an enormous opportunity for some of the biggest brands in the world, biggest companies in the world. So would you say, are there any um, well-developed clusters or you know, any specific industries emerging out of this? Or, or are you still kind of open to you know, the, the wide array of possibilities? So we've had some early success um, around 3D printing, you know, the advanced manufacturing concept, we're able to leverage our relationships with the folks up at Oak Ridge National Laboratories, which is about 70 miles north of Chattanooga. Um, you know, for those that don't know, the national labs, um, Oak Ridge is one. I think there's seven or eight others in the country. But these are some of the smartest people, um, and these are folks working with the, the federal government. Um, but they're really helping in this region to accelerate some of the, 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 the strongest and most technologically advanced um, ventures that are coming to market. And so relationships that we have uh, with Oak Ridge National Labs, relationships that we have with the Bredesen Center at UTK and with our own university and academia folks here at UTC really enhances the value that we can provide around advanced manufacturing. 
Something that being said, mm -hmm. anything uh, happening in the, anything in the automotive sector as well? Yeah, so we had um, some strength there. You know, I will say on bringing businesses here. So we see a lot of um, businesses feeding the automotive sector pipeline. Uh, Volkswagen built a plant here where they now make the Passat and have recently announced that they'll also be building the Atlas here. And so we've so seen an ecosystem um, of automotive supply chain companies evolve. Um, related, Chattanooga is also one of the biggest logistics, transportation, um, and, and warehousing clusters in the country. On a per capita basis, I think we're probably a top five or six cluster for, for that industry. And so you get a lot of supply chain and innovation around logistics, transportation. This is big intermodal trucking as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an area where I think we have some strength. Um, the other two areas that I wanna point out um, are areas that are places where people may not even recognize and part of what we're doing at Colab is bringing that to people's attention. Um, Erlanger Hospital, which is the seventh largest public hospital system in the country, is, has some of the leading um, clinicians in the, the fields of cardiology and neuroscience. In fact, when you think about stroke care, we see more stroke care patients here per capita than almost any hospital in the country. And so that's created a really unique opportunity uh, for some of the physicians here to leverage themselves into the, uh, the entrepreneurship world, and they've done very well for themselves. We're experiencing that in Charleston as well through the ZN Institute and you know, for applied neuroscience and, and a lot of yeah. different, different synergies. Well, you know, I, um, shifting gears here for a moment, I know you work for Leadership for Tomorrow, a, a DC-based nonprofit. And, yep. you know, we, we have a lot of discussions about providing access and opportunity to people of all types of backgrounds and, and be more inclusive. What are some initiatives uh, underway in Chattanooga? Yeah, so I think what we're doing here is um, really accessing the full community. We have an incredible diverse community here in Chattanooga. In fact, I look at our community and it's inspiring because it looks a lot like the country. And so we think that the things that we're doing here uh, to be successful in the fields of diversity, inclusion, and belonging are best practices that can be leveraged across the country. Um, one of the things that we've done is built a really unique relationship with Launch Chattanooga. Uh, Launch Chattanooga is another entrepreneurship and venture support organization that focuses on the most underserved communities. And so we, you know, we understand and believe that sometimes certain people um, in certain communities where they don't have access and they may not have a history of, of success in this realm, people need more support and more focused um, support around being successful. And so Launch Chattanooga is a partner of Colab and they work, um, do incredible work with, with that population. And what's really awesome is that oftentimes, you know, some companies out of those accelerators will then be prepared for our accelerator program. Uh, one company that comes to mind, which is an incredible story of one of our entrepreneurs, Felicia Jackson down here, her company is CPR Wrap. Um, and it is a really, really amazing impact um, d development that she's created. It is a respiratory device that provides instruction for providing CPR um, to people in the crisis situations. Why this is so interesting is this was a mother who was actually a nurse that in a crisis moment froze up a little bit and couldn't forgot the steps for CPR, right? In a critical moment with an own family member. And so that was her inspiration for creating this device. Um, and so she actually went through the Launch Chattanooga program because she had never done anything entrepreneurial before, got great support there, came through our accelerator, and now she's found incredible funding and incredible support and gained traction in the market with her product. And so we're so, so incredibly proud of her. Um, you know, phenomenal woman coming from diver, a diverse community that's found incredible success in Chattanooga. That's amazing. There's no bigger problem to solve than saving a life, right? That's it. That's, that's incredible. That's it. Well, you know, uh, reading the tea leaves, what do you see in the future? Let's say two years, five years from now, what direction is Colab's heading and, and what are you seeing in Chattanooga? So as part of the strategic plan that we put in place, we really want to leverage our accelerator and our entrepreneurship ecosystem to the things where we believe we have a strong competitive advantage. And that goes back to those industry verticals that you were talking about before. You know, we don't want to make it super tight and restrictive 
but we want to make sure that anybody that's developing something, you know, in the field of kind of outdoor recreation, food and beverage, because we have an amazing lifestyle community here, anybody that's doing anything around applications and IoT, smart cities, AR, VR, e-gaming, um, things that can leverage an ultra high bandwidth, low latency network, anybody that's doing anything in the field of logistics, or anybody that's doing anything in the field of healthcare, specifically wellness um, and prevention, looks to Chattanooga as an opportunity to partner with our ecosystem and to grow their business. What would you say is the balance between homegrown entrepreneurs and companies that you're attracting to the area? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think initially we were attracting a lot of companies and intentionally attracting a lot of companies because we wanted to show people here what entrepreneurship really looks like. And so I think what you've seen is that now we've really strengthened the culture of entrepreneurship here in Chattanooga, and that mix has started to flip, which has created a really unique opportunity because we have a critical mass of homegrown entrepreneurs now. Mm -hmm. We've created a critical mass around that, which now will attract people from outside as well. Well, this is incredible, Marcus. I mean, it's really exciting stuff going on, and we're so excited to welcome you to tell this story at Dig South and be on an economic development panel and you know, share with all of our attendees and with Charleston County Economic Development, who will be sponsoring the panel. They love to connect with other cities like yours and those vibrant startup ecosystems. So thank you for joining us at Dig South Tech Conference. Is there anything that we didn't touch on that you'd like to share with our listeners in closing? Well, I think one thing uh, and one development, it's, it's, it's public now, but is incredibly exciting for us is that we've got some validation around what we're doing here in Chattanooga. Uh, Steve Case and the Rise of the Rest seed fund up uh, from Revolution in D.C. Right. has included Chattanooga as one of five cities on the spring 2018 Rise of the Rest tour. So Chattanooga will be profiled um, and will be a stop on that tour on Thursday, May the 10th. We would love to, have, the whole city's going to be there, so we'd love to have people uh, from outside the city to come and be a part of that as well and see what we're doing in Chattanooga. Um, it is certainly validation that we're doing something right here. We're being included on the biggest stage um, for a movement of entrepreneurship in cities outside of the coast, and it's just an incredible uh, sense of accomplishment and an honor for the folks here in Chattanooga. Well done. We welcomed uh, the Rise of the Rest tour to Charleston two years ago, and it gave us a significant bump. And we had the the tour stop and produce the event on the Yorktown, you know, on the aircraft yep. carrier on the harbor. Very dramatic, you know. It was uh, it was exciting and, and definitely a, a you know a, not only a feel good opportunity but a significant one that recognized what we are doing, and I'm sure it'll do the same for you in Chattanooga. It's a huge opportunity, and I hope it gives us the same type of bump that, that Charleston enjoyed. Certainly. Well, thank you very much, Marcus. Let us know if we can do anything for you and you know, help you in any way. Thank you for listening to South Pod, Rise of a Region, where innovators dish on success, failure, and a rapidly evolving South.